Jobs Americans won't do. It's a phrase that gets my hackles up every single time. How about yours? And with good reason, because it's a lie. But what makes this lie particularly dangerous is that it's being used by our own government repeatedly and shamelessly to undermine the rights of we the people and the value of American citizenship. DHS Secretary Michael Chertoff recently told business leaders who have been complaining about a lack of labor, This is harsh but accurate proof positive that for the first time in decades we've succeeded in changing the dynamic and are actually beginning to reduce illegal immigration. But he wouldn't be the DHF secretary we've come to know and loathe without adding something like this. Unfortunately, unless you counterbalance that with a robust system to allow people to come in temporarily and legally, you're going to wind up with an economic problem. Oh, 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 so let me see if I understand this. The only possible options for labor in America are illegal aliens or foreign guest workers? It's one of the oldest canards of the open borders gang, one we like to call, but who will do the work? And it goes a little something like this. Without illegal aliens or foreign guest workers, no houses will be built, no burgers will be flipped, no hotel rooms will be cleaned, and all Americans will be living in stone huts eating bugs. Color us unimpressed with that theory. In the real world, these are jobs Americans would love to have, at decent wages. How did we ever discover this deep, dark, mysterious, secret information? Well, for starters, we read, as in newspapers. ICE raided the Swift Meatpacking Plant in Greeley, Colorado, arresting 261 people for immigration-related matters. Within a week, they had applicants receiving over 200 applications on one day. One such applicant, Francisco Contreras, is a legal immigrant from Mexico who had lived in Greeley for 30 years. His take? ICE is doing the right thing by coming here because I've been four years struggling to get a job here and they didn't hire me. They hire the ones that have phony papers. It was more of the same when a Kreider chicken plant in Stillmore, Georgia and a military contractor in New Bedford, Massachusetts were raided. Each time we were told that Americans wouldn't do these jobs and each time Americans swarmed for the opportunity to do so. Jobs Americans won't do or jobs Americans won't do when the widespread hiring of illegal aliens has turned decent blue-collar work into crappy jobs that no longer pay a living wage. American businesses have become like drug addicts, and their drug of choice is cheap, wage-deflating, country-killing imported foreign labor. Our countrymen have fought long and hard to procure decent wages and benefits for American workers. Now greedy businesses and our own government seek to undo it all. They want us to watch in silence as they create a new surf class right here in America to feed their addiction to bigger and bigger profits at our expense. Not on our watch. It's time for an intervention. The victim, a 15-year-old Arizona girl. The accused. Jose Dolores Montoya Sanchez, 24, an illegal alien. The charges, sexual assault, kidnapping, and two counts of sexual abuse. The story. Police began investigating when the 15-year-old victim called to report that Sanchez had sexually assaulted her at a Guadalupe, Arizona residence. She was immediately taken for medical care, and the resulting forensic report confirmed the assault. Sanchez was picked up for questioning, and authorities report that he first denied the allegation, then after being informed of the forensic results, admitted to the assault. He also disclosed that he had been living in the country illegally for 10 years. Sheriff Joe, as always, wastes no time beating around the bush. This suspect sexually assaulted a young, innocent girl, and this is yet another example of a violent crime committed by an illegal alien in Maricopa County. Of course, if our government had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of Maricopa County and the rest of the country, this scumbag wouldn't have been here to rape an innocent 15-year-old girl on American soil. And that makes this crime what? 100% preventable. The victim, Marcus Lassiter, 
7 of North Carolina. The accused, Hippolito Zamora Hernandez, also known as Pollo Hernandez Rodriguez, 30, an illegal alien. The charges, felony hit and run, felony assault, DWI, possession of a stolen vehicle, driving without a license, speeding, reckless driving, and second degree manslaughter. The story. Seven-year-old Marcus was standing on the side of the road on Sunday, April 13th, when witnesses say Hernandez sped around a corner, swerved onto the shoulder, and struck the boy. Marcus was rushed to Duke Hospital, where he died the next night. Police report that Hernandez was doing 70 miles per hour, 25 miles over the speed limit, and had a blood alcohol level more than twice the legal limit. After striking the seven-year-old, Hernandez fled the scene and gave a false name when police caught up with him. And he was no stranger to local authorities, who have been looking for him since December for failure to appear in court for a previous DWI charge. So how was the death of this innocent seven-year-old boy 100% preventable? Let me count the ways. 1. Hernandez was in the country illegally in the first place. 2. In 2004, he was charged with DWI. He wasn't convicted because the officer was not in court. 3. In 2005, charged with another DWI and speeding, and again, not convicted because the officer didn't show up in court. Four, in 2005, charged with an open container of alcohol in the car and giving false information to a police officer. Again, not convicted. Five, in 2006, charged yet again with DWI, convicted of reckless driving, He paid $210 in court costs and a $25 translator's fee. Six, in 2007, charged yet one more time with DWI, the charge for which he failed to appear in court in December. Of course, if our government, at any level and at any point in time, had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, this scumbag wouldn't have been here to get away with breaking our laws over and over and over again. And he wouldn't have been here to get behind the wheel of a stolen car, drunk, and kill an innocent seven-year-old boy named Marcus Lassiter. And that makes this crime what? 100% preventable. Every year, like clockwork, as the temperature rises, politicians' thoughts turn to amnesty for our illegal invaders. And every year they find new ways to present the same old, tired talking points. So it is with great pleasure that we bring this year's amnesty-selling meme, Require. That's right. This year the brainiacs in charge of developing and shoveling the BS have decided that the high IQ move is to sell the idea that amnesty is the punishment. Let's compare and contrast, shall we? Barack Obama, in a speech on the Senate floor in April of 2006, we must allow undocumented immigrants to come out of the shadows and step on a path toward full participation in our society. And Obama last week. We must require the 12 million undocumented immigrants who are already here to step out of the shadows and onto a path that includes the ability to earn citizenship. In fact, two groups close to the DNC, the Center for American Progress, and the Coalition for Comprehensive Immigration Reform released a confidential study that boils down to this, a rhetorical change from offering a path to citizenship to requiring illegal aliens to become legalized. Clearly, Obama got the memo. We get that it's akin to punishing your child by making him eat ice cream sundaes. And unlike the elite idiots who run this country, we get that you get it too. So as we enter the silly season, be on the lookout for the rhetoric that's all the rage on Capitol Hill. It's not amnesty when you require illegal aliens to accept the gift of American citizenship. Thanks for clicking in to this week's episode of the Blogs for Borders video blog burst. Big thanks to this week's sponsor, again, Digger's Realm with a spotlight on the dark side of illegal immigration, a comprehensive report that includes the facts, figures, and statistics you need, plus an in-depth look at the myriad problems that stem from illegal immigration and how they are deeply damaging our country. Go read it 
at diggersrealm.com. And until next week, be vigilant, be vocal, and be unrelenting. We've got a country to save.